the reason why he died was the shock from the knowing the fact that people are dying mm -hmm. because of hunger. Mm -hmm. I'm Casey Narte, and you are watching Workable Words. Mm -hmm. This is a YouTube channel where we talk about action. Yeah. Uh, we also talk with some of the analysts in the world who have some things to say and hopefully can inspire mm -hmm. uh, some of you out there to get more involved. Mm -hmm. uh, today, I have a very special guest. Now, uh, about uh, 34,000 North Korean refugees have escaped to South Korea in the last 20 years, uh, but there are some special, special cases. And our guest today is Mr. Kim Dong Soo, and he is one of those special cases. When he was in North Korea, um, he was one of those high-level diplomats, uh, <laughs> uh, went to the elite universities in North Korea. And he's here today, he'll be talking about the different aspects related to North Korea. Mm -hmm. um, now, the first question I have for him yeah, is please. that you escaped in North Korea back in 1998. Yeah. yeah. And we met about three or four years ago. Yeah. Uh, at that time, you were not public. You yeah. were not giving interviews. Yeah. But now you are. Yeah, I'm free now. You're free now. <laughs> okay. So what's what's so why are you speaking out now? Uh, of course, before the before interview, let me first uh, greeting to mm -hmm. all the audiences mm -hmm. of uh, KC, and I knew uh, Mr. KC a long time ago. Mm -hmm. It was Mr. KC. Uh, is very uh, energetic man who is fighting for the North Korean human rights and he's also helping a lot of poor North Korean defectors mm. in abroad who are not still uh, come to South Korea, America. Mm. So I'm very much appreciated for your uh, very sincere and hard yes, efforts right. for mm. our North Korean defectors' mm. lives and human rights. Mm. Uh, why I'm free now is that I am retired okay. <laughs> since last, uh, uh, from the beginning of this year. Mm. Uh, I worked in INSS, Institute for National Security Strategies, mm. uh, in South Korea uh, for almost 23 years. Uh, as you told me, I arrived in Seoul with my family from Italy, mm. North Korean embassy in Italy. In 1998. So, what were you doing in Italy at that time? At that time, I was uh, a second secretary of North Korean Embassy in Rome, in mm -hmm. Italy. And since then, from 1998 until now, I worked for almost 23 years in INSS. So, this is like about analyzing about North Korea? Sure. And, okay. It's a kind of institute. Uh, which are, are running by NIS, mm. National, National Intelligence, Intelligence Agency. Okay. Mm. Uh, in this institute, there are about 100 people are working, mm. researching. Mm. Uh, there are three main uh, faculties, uh, departments. The first department is relating uh, with analyzing and researching about North Korean situation. And the second department is specializing about international situation. And the third uh, uh, department is responsible for the securities uh, oh, inside and outside of the country. Mm -hmm. um, there are many uh, good, skillful, and trained and uh, knowledgeable South Korean doctors, mm -hmm. researchers, NIS, NIS people. Mm -hmm. At the same time, there are also uh, many North Korean defectors, mm. high elite defectors, mm. who worked in North Korea in various fields, in the party, mm. in the government, mm. and in the special organizations in North Korea. Yeah. Well, I think a lot of people might be curious because you are mm. one of those high-level diplomats yeah. uh, representing North Korea. Mm. Um, what is it that triggered you to escape? Oh, yeah. More than 20 years ago. Okay, uh, before that, uh, let, okay, should I explain about my... Yeah, who are you? What, what's your life? <laughs> How you, what happened? Yeah, <laughs> I have to tell the audience first about my life. Okay. <laughs> Myself first. It's, it's, it's uh, my duty, I think. Uh, 
I was born in 19... 1960, mm -hmm. in North Hungary province of North Korea. It's just bes beside the uh, Mount Baekdo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there I was grown up until uh, eight years, ten years old. Mm -hmm. And I moved to Pyongyang with my father, who was dispatched to central government headquarters of the party in Pyongyang. So that means you came from a family that was already the elite. Yeah. So you uh, grew up into this. Yeah, my yeah. father was uh, a party secretary, chief party secretary in the, the county mm -hmm. uh, administrative you see, uh, headquarters. And there in Pyongyang, I graduated Pyongyang Foreign Language School mm -hmm. and also Pyongyang Foreign Language College. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, they combined it School, school and college together. Mm -hmm. So they are now calling this uh, as the Pyongyang Foreign Language University, okay. which is the course of 11 years compulsory education. But when I was uh, in the Pyongyang Foreign Language School, it was uh, middle school and secondary school mm -hmm. combining courses, okay. six years old okay. course. And in the meantime, uh, when I entered the Pyongyang Foreign Language College, I was dispatched to foreign countries for studying English. Mm -hmm. It was African country, Tanzania, okay. <laughs> because they, they hadn't enough money for the currencies. <laughs> and the more important thing is that they had no diplomatic relationship mm -hmm. with the U USA, uh, United Kingdom, which are uh, using the mother tongue of English. So you're talking 1980s. It was... Uh, it was, uh, I was dispatched, yeah, yeah, it, I was dispatched in 1979. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There I studied in Dar es Salaam University for about four years. Uh, I studied uh, English first, and at the same time, uh, African history and politics. Mm -hmm. I came back in 1982 to Pyongyang, and I entered the foreign ministry directly. Mm -hmm. And the foreign ministry, uh, I was dispatched, uh, appointed to the department which was responsible for the international organizations, including United Nations. Uh, in Pyongyang, in North Korean Foreign Ministry, uh, there are about 1,500 diplomats are working there, uh, and there are about 30 departments. Among 30 departments, there are about 15 departments at the regional departments. So I worked in the, one of the regional departments of the United Nations uh, department. And I was dispatched to Switzerland, Norway, uh, Italy as the separate diplomats. I was dispatched to Switzerland in 1984. And there I, in Bayern, not Geneva, in Bayern I worked as the attaché. Uh, the first my diplomatic title. There I work. My main duty was was to carry out the diplomatic work with the non-diplomatic countries with North Korea, for example, Benelux countries like uh, Netherlands, mm -hmm. Belgium, Luxembourg, okay. and Greece. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, inside of the embassy, I was the assistant for the North uh, Kim Jong Il's. Uh, Secret money mm. in okay. Peru. Okay. At that time, there were about 40, 40 or 50 billion US dollar of Kim Jong Un secret money in Peru <laughs> international <laughs> banks. <laughs> so I was just an attaché. So, so I, wait, so I wait, the role was to like take the money around and carrying the, carry the money <laughs> in the head, in the bags, <laughs> and driving the you see, uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, taking the people in my car from the embassy to the airplane. Actually, mm -hmm. in Peru, there's no international airport. Okay. It's funny, yeah? Uh -huh. Peru is the capital of Switzerland, but they don't have the international port, airport there. Yeah. They have international airport in Zurich and uh, Geneva. Mm -hmm. So, okay, the main, I, I think people might be kind of curious. So, uh, okay, you're taking all this money around. Yeah. What were they spending it on? I mean, what were like some of the luxurious things? Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, at that time, the ambassador of North Korea, mm -hmm. uh, Lee Chan, uh, so called Lee Chan, mm -hmm. 
he was mainly responsible for this secret money. Okay. Uh, and uh, whenever they need uh, foreign currencies, hard currencies mm -hmm. in Pyongyang, Kim Jong il office dispatched the secretaries to the Switzerland. And they brought to the uh, secret money in cash. Mm. Uh, once they carried uh, three, three or five million US dollars in one time okay. uh, in several suitcases, you see. But this, this money was needed for him to control, to rule in the high, high elites in North Korea because okay. he had to give them, you know, gifts and some oh, you see, okay. uh, you know, uh, luxurious things to those high-level people, cadres, okay. in every case, uh, occasions of the national holidays. You see. So the money wasn't really for like paying bribes and other things overseas, it was to buy things to take back sure, for, both. for people in North Korea to keep them satisfied, you're right, the leadership yeah. and people around them. Sure, you're okay. right. They bought with this money a lot of luxurious things from Eastern country, East European, West European countries, and also in China and Russia. Mm -hmm. And at the last post which I walked uh, was the North Korean embassy in Italy. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, there I walked from 1994 to 1998. Mm -hmm. uh, at that time, it was the hard, arduous March period of North Korea. Okay. Okay. Uh, A lot of people died because of hunger, and Kim Il-sung mm -hmm. died in 1994. Mm -hmm. There are many reasons why he had died, mm -hmm. uh, especially heart attack, mm -hmm. uh, which he had always in, uh, dangerous uh, sickness in his body all the time. So the reason uh, why he died was the shock from the knowing the fact that people are dying with Mm -hmm. Because of hunger. Okay. Yeah, because at that time Kim Jong Il didn't report anything mm -hmm. the 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 facts in inside the country to Kim Il Sung. He always stressed that Kim Il Sung had to leave until one hundred years. Mm -hmm. That is all only that one is giving energy and strength to the people of Kim Jong Il. People say so he didn't he didn't report anything to Kim Jong Il. Mm -hmm. Kim Il Sung. Okay. Yeah. But Kim Il-sung knew that in 1994 when Carter, mm -hmm. the former president of the U.S., visited Pyongyang uh, because of uh, nuclear development in North Korea at that time. I want to ask you one question, and that yeah. is that there is a controversy, I guess, or disagreement about how many people died oh, yeah. during that time. And I heard you say at an event we had a couple of years ago, yeah, yeah. at least one million? Uh, let me give you, I'll give you the answer. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in 1994, when Kim Il Sung died, Kim Jong Il uh, instructed and dispatched the real diplomats who were responsible for the international organizations uh, for food and uh, agriculture. Mm -hmm. So, about five from five people, diplomats from foreign ministry, dispatched to the no uh, Rome, mm -hmm. and we spent all our efforts for earning for you see, the, to, to receive the assistance, mm -hmm. food assistance from the international organizations. Okay. Uh, At that time, we received the statistics about the uh, people who died because of hunger from the Central Statistics Bureau in Pyongyang. Mm -hmm. uh, in the public, many people, they, uh, say, they had said, even they are saying now that uh, three million people have died because of hunger. I don't know mm. uh, to which statistics they are mm -hmm. depending on uh, these numbers, but uh, inside, when I was working in North Korean Embassy in Italy, we received the data, the numbers of the hung, uh, died people was 1 million. Okay. It was 1994. That's so, the, like at the beginning? Uh, it's not in the middle. Okay. Uh, because, you know, the dying people, mm -hmm. the people of North Korea died uh, because of hunger from the beginning of 1990s, okay. uh, uh, at the end of 1980s. Okay. So right. totally in one, 10 years, from the beginning of 1990s 
to the end of 1990s until the end of the Adios March period, all together, people are saying that 3 million people died. But according to my embassy statistics at that time, it was about 1 million people died. And we uh, walked for receiving the, uh, the food assistance with this data. One million people died, so you have to give us, please give us the food for this okay. uh, poor people. So. Mm. Okay, how reliable do you think those numbers were? I mean, because they were trying to get some assistance, but still yeah. they don't really want to admit. The uh, you know, these numbers, uh, we cannot tell exact numbers, because as you might know, the statistics in North Korea is very strict, mm. and it's very secret. The Minister of the Statistics Bureau in North Korea is the level of the minister, uh, Vice Minister of the Party Central Committee, and it is directly, uh, uh, directly belonged to Kim Jong Il's Kim Jong Un's office. Mm. So no one, no people in the North Korea cannot interfere in the statistics matters. But according to Hang Jang Young. The former North Korean Party uh, chief, chief Secretary of the International Relations Department of the Party Central Committee. According to him, he was our chairman in the institute in South Korea. He told us that about, about around 3 million people died. But according to my uh, knowledge, uh, the statistics which I gained uh, during the last period mm -hmm. when I was living in South Korea, I think around 2 million. Okay. Yeah, two, but it's huge numbers. Yeah. yeah. Part, part of, part but, of no one, but no one knows the yeah. exact numbers. Yeah. yeah, but that's out of a population of about 24 million, at that time maybe 22. Sure, 22. Sure. So. sure. Okay. Uh, so. People say when I left Pyongyang, the po total population was about 2.5 million. 25, 25, 25 million. But uh, uh, if they say three million people have died because of hunger, at that time they said the population was uh, two, 23 million. Mm -hmm. So it might be. Okay. Uh, you see, uh, but I think there is not exact numbers. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, because, as I told you, this statistics bureau, Central Statistics mm -hmm. Bureau of North Korea, is very strict. It is very strict. Uh, and the secret as nuclear programs. Yeah. Same, same. You know, I've, I've got so many, I'm taking notes, I've got so many questions for yeah. you. Yeah. One thing is about you personally. Yeah. When or when is it that you realized that they, they were lying to you, that uh, the regime was lying, mm -hmm. such as Kim Jong il not telling Kim Il sung mm -hmm. the reality of the situation? Mm -hmm. You were a diplomat. Yeah. So, what was it that was going on with you as far as like, should you believe what they're telling you? You're going out and telling No. Oh, okay. uh, you know, I came to know this fact uh, since I entered the foreign ministry in the, in the beginning of 1980s. Okay. Uh, from the beginning of 1980s until the end of 1980s was the period of uh, joint ruling period by mm -hmm. Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. Mm -hmm. At that time, the foreign ministry, they reported documents uh, to the two places. One, the Kim Il-sung, Kong Su san Palace, okay. and one document was sent directly to Kim Jong-il's office, which is the office now Kim Jong-un is working. Mm -hmm. So it means at that time, in 1980s, it was the period of the joint ruling of dictatorship by Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. Mm -hmm. But from the beginning of 1990s, Kim Jong-il instructed the foreign ministry and also the other major ruling authorities, party, people's army, ministry of people's army, mm -hmm. and the national intelligence security agency, and the people, minister of people's security, and foreign ministry. These are five organizations are the major uh, ruling uh, organization in North Korea. So, from that time, beginning of the 1980s, Kim Jong-un instructed those organizations to report only to him. Okay. And it means from that time, it was the 
monolith, monolithic uh, ruling system of Kim Jong Il, mm. and Kim Jong Il checked every report, and then he sent the only good news to Kim Il Sung. <laughs> so from that time, Kim Il Sung was took aside completely. Okay. He was, uh, and he was only figurehead. Yeah, yeah, uh, okay. he was treated as the only king mm. without any authority, right. uh, any power. Mm. So this period, I could know. And I was working in the foreign ministry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, when I was working in Italy, in Rome, I could know very well that Kim Jong-un uh, always told lies to Kim Il sung since the beginning of 1990s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah? Now, you just casually mentioned names like Wang jong yo and he's oh, obviously yeah. a, a major figure. Yeah. And you also uh, were very close to Jang song tae Yeah. Uh, what happened to him? Mm -hmm. Uh, Han jang uh he defected, politically defected to South Korea in 1996, I think. 96, yeah. okay. uh, and he gave a lot of influence to the North Korean high elite, mm -hmm. especially those people, diplomats like me in foreign countries, you see. And that was one of the reasons why I defected to, to South mm -hmm. Korea. It was not main reason. One of one of the reasons. There are many reasons. Mm -hmm. And Han jang yok and Zhang jang tae is uh, uh, they are. Uh, how do you say? How can you say in English? They are Zhang jang tae's uh, sister, sister's uh, daughter, okay. and uh, Han jang yok's son married each other. How okay. do you say? So it's, a, it's a kind of related relatives. Yeah. yeah? yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And they were very close when mm. they walked in Pyongyang. Mm. And Han jang yeok always told me that uh, Zhang jang tae visited his house, his home secretly, and always informed him uh, how much Kim Jong-il distrusts Han jang yeok mm. And sometimes he criticized Han jang yeok mm. to behave mm. uh, you know, in front of Kim jong il Please behave right. <laughs> it's not in wrong way. Okay. Anyway, uh, that Han jang yeok I didn't know very well when I was in Pyongyang. I could know him when I was in South Korea. Okay. He was the chairman of the uh, council of our institution. Uh, so he always worked with us together. Okay. About Zhang jang tae I came to know him since I was working in Switzerland. At that time, it was the beginning uh, 1984. Zhang jang tae was working as the chief section chief of the uh, uh, Department of the International Organizations in the Party Central Committee. Uh, I came to know Chang Chang Tae since I was working in Switzerland, North Korean members in Switzerland. At that time, Chang Chang Tae was the section chief of the International uh, Affairs Department of the Party Central Committee. His main duty was to control all the North Korean embassies in other countries and to give the instructions, execute the, uh, the movement activities for owning the hard currencies mm -hmm. for Kim Jong-il's office. Uh, and he used to visit Switzerland at that time. So I was, as I told you in the beginning, I was a driver. Yes. <laughs> and we, we, once he visited uh, Switzerland, even in Italy when I was there, he visits for about one month every time. So we stayed, he stayed for a long time, and I always accompanied with my ambassador. I was a driver, the ambassador and John Santa was always sitting beside, behind me, and we talked and we joked each other a lot, and they treat me. Mm -hmm. As his uh, secret assistant you see, okay. from that time. They believed in me. Mm -hmm. So from that time, I continued working with Zhang Zhang Te in Switzerland, in Norway, even in Italy. Mm -hmm. So the main period, the main working period which I assisted Zhang Zhang Te was in Italy. Mm -hmm. He used to visit once in a year, one month. So every time when he came to Italy, I always took 
him in my car mm -hmm. and we visited all the counties, provinces of Italy uh, for collecting the famous medicines mm -hmm. for Kim Jong-il and Kim Gyo mm -hmm. and also meeting uh, with famous doctors, hospital doctors uh, for contract, giving huge of dollar uh, money mm -hmm. foreign currencies and invite them we contracted each other, invite them any, at any time mm -hmm. when there was the sudden accident or something wrong in Kim, Kim Jong-il and Kim Jong-il. Yes, yes. But he fell out of favor and was killed? Oh, uh, yeah. Was About, uh, yeah, sir. Uh, uh, I can say that uh, Zhang Sang-te was one of the most loyal men to Kim Jong-il. At, at the same time, he was also loyal to Kim Jong-un and he himself tried all his best to support Kim Jong-un from the beginning of his uh, appointment as the leader of North Korea because Kim Jong-un died suddenly. So Kim Jong-un has had not enough time for training of leadership. So in this period, Zhang sang -te, he helped, assisted a lot, thinking that he, is, he was the father of Kim Jong-un, like Kim Jong-il. Mm -hmm. uh, but he was brutally, you see, executed by Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. Because there are some reasons. Many mass media they analyze that Kim Jong-un executed Kim Jong Sun te because he tried to carry out the military coup and also he tried to, uh, you see, uh, to, to hand over the uh, North Korean region to China. Mm -hmm. But I think they are all predictions. Mm -hmm. The main reason why Kim Jong-un executed uh, Zhang sang te is because Zhang sang te uh, was, number one, he assisted, helped so much the first son of Kim Jong-il, Kim Jong-nam. Okay. The first son, Kim Jong-nam. Mm -hmm. uh, and second reason, the first reason, let me also, uh, please explain to you, is that uh, while Kim Jong-il was alive, he, uh, he gave the duties to Kim Gyeong-hee and Zhang sang te to look care of all the children which he made with several women, wives. There are unofficial, uh, you know, four wives. Mm -hmm. Okay. of Kim Jong-il. The first wife was Sung Hye Rim. And Sung Hye Rim gave birth to uh, you see, Jang, Kim Jong-nam. Mm -hmm. And the second wife was Kim yong su This was told by Hang jang yak okay. He told us uh, this fact, you see. He knew everything about Kim Jong-il's family and Kim Jong-il. And he told us when he was working as the chairman of the council of our institution, the second wife, uh, called Kim Young Suk, gave birth two daughters. Mm -hmm. And the third wife is Ko Young Hee, okay. the mother of yeah. Kim Jong Un. And the last wife was yeah. Kim Ho, mm -hmm. who gave one child, one son. Mm -hmm. All these children, about all these children, Kim Jong Hee gave the instructions to Kim Young Hee and Zhang Sang Te to look care about all these secret. Yeah. Their children. Okay. And Zhang Song Te really he carried out the instructions of Kim Jong Il, mm -hmm. and he he spent much uh, his care for Kim Jong Nam, mm -hmm. I think, because he was the first okay. yeah, son of Kim Jong Il. Mm -hmm. So he is helped a lot, and he at the beginning he thought that Kim Jong Nam would become the successor of Kim Jong Il. But when Kim, Kim Jong-il was alive, it was no problem. But when he died, Kim Jong-un trusted, first he trusted Zhang sang te mm -hmm. And Zhang sang te really, as I told him, he tried all his best to be loyal to mm -hmm. Zhang sang te Kim Jong-un. But he was, second reason is that he was too much believed in him. Mm -hmm. He thought himself that he, is, mm -hmm. he was the father oh, okay. of Kim Jong-un. Mm -hmm. Originally, he was to sit secretly behind okay. when Kim Jong-il was alive. Mm -hmm. 
he walked, he had to walk as the deputy minister of the Party Central Committee mm -hmm. to assist behind the screen mm -hmm. to Kim Jong Un. Mm -hmm. Just like he had he had done when he, when Kim Jong Un was alive. But he thought himself mm -hmm. that Kim Jong Il died suddenly and he had to help Kim Jong Un like his father. Right. Because he had no he thought he had no much time of mm. leadership training. Mm. That's until that is okay. Mm. But uh, according to the to this wrong judgment of Jiang Zongte, he touched his hands to several the authorities, party, especially the organizational guidance department of Party Central Committee. And secondly, okay, yeah. secondly, the National Intelligence Security Agency. Mm -hmm. He stretched so he's too his, much. Yeah, yeah. his hands to, okay. to those biggest powerful organizations mm -hmm. and he reduced those high elites who made him you say, uh, unhappy when Kim Jong-il was alive. Mm -hmm. So he executed many powerful men in these two main organizations. That's why these two organizations, some people were executed in fact at that time, the deputy ministers of party, the department of party central committee and also the intelligence security agency. So they thought they all of them might be attacked by Jiang Chong Te. So they collected all the secrets you know, mm -hmm. data, stuff, okay. because okay. all they had all, how do you say, hearing, secret, how do you say, uh, in English, you know, in the telephone we can hear high, oh, hearing like high. eavesdropping, yeah, the same as phones, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and they, they, they also collect all these materials of, mm -hmm. you see, secret materials and collected it and reported it in Zhang mm -hmm. Yil, look, Look, Chan Chang Tae is trying to prepare. Yeah. He's to, uh, he's to prepare a military coup yeah. uh, by reducing all these organizations, that seizing the power of these organizations, and then he will make you robot, and he will take them. Mm. Uh, you see, put it top. Yeah. And uh, there are some stages. First, he will become the prime minister. Mm. Secondly, he will seize the military power, yeah. people's armament, and then he. He will took the let's say uh, regime, uh, throw, throwing Kim Jong Un out. Of yeah. The, uh, so then, reason. this is the reason. Yeah. Of course, there's always the question: How was he executed? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you said it brutally, but what's the sure, reason? Sure. Uh, so before that, I dare to say that the only one reason that he didn't like the succession of Kim Jong Un uh, of Kim Jong Il in the beginning. That is the main reason why he was executed. Mm -hmm. And he was executed uh, very brutally. NIS at that time, uh, they, they told in the mass media, they shooted him with a four, I don't know in English, the, some military machine guns. Bigger than machine guns. What is it in Korean? Uh, uh -huh. There are three, yeah. four holes, machine guns, which you can catch the aeroplane. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a big one, is it? It's a, uh, if we understand that four machine guns yeah. <laughs> in one time, shoot at him, mm -hmm. <laughs> he shoot at him, he, there is no even bombs. But after the bombs, they shoot it, they fired, or they make, to make it ashes, you see. Okay. This is the this yeah. is the uh, evidence of NIS of yeah. South Korea at that time. They told to the mass media, but many of the North Korean defectors didn't see it. Mm. Didn't. There is not even now who participated in this execution of Jiang Zong Day. But according to my knowledge, or the experience in the past, mm. they could execute it like that, mm. as NIS reported to the people and to the mass media. All right. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah. Now, so you escaped in 1998. Yeah. Defected. Um, defected. Yeah. Why do you say defected? Because uh, a refugee, defector, yeah. you say you defected. Yeah. Okay. There are, there are, there are several reasons why I defected. Uh, 
At that time, as I told you, uh, the, de the defection of uh, Hong Jong-yo gave also influence to my defection. And at that time, all the diplomats mm -hmm. in North Korean high elites thought that Kim Jong-un's Jong reason mm -hmm. uh, could be finished within one or two years. Okay. As I told you, it was the uh, it was the period of the arduous march mm. period in North Korea. Uh, many people died, and also uh, many high elites who visited who visited uh, you know Rome, Italy, our embassy. They all all of them. They told me. They told us secretly that. Mm. In family on this situation is severe, yeah. yeah, it's very dangerous, it might be over within one or two years. And also Chang Chang Te, mm. at that time he visited Rome, mm. and he also was almost, you see, uh, given up. Yeah. Uh, every day he was drinking whiskey and you see, he was complaining about top level yeah. people, and he was also worrying about the collapse of North Korean reason. Yeah. Uh, this was the second uh, second reason. And the third reason, uh, you know, it's a personal reason that I was uh, <clears throat> passed in the examination for the International Office of WFP, World Food Program. Okay. And the ambassador <coughs> sent a telegram to North Korea, Pyongyang, mm -hmm. that Kim dong soo was passed the examination uh, for becoming the international officer of the World Food Program. Mm -hmm. But they uh, changed it with another man. <laughs> <laughs> they sent another man to, uh, uh, instead of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that time, Kang Sok Chu was the first deputy minister of the foreign ministry. He sent, replied the telegram that Kim Dong Su is more needed for North Korean government in Kenya. Mm -hmm. So they sent another man to my place of WFP World Health Program. So I was so much angry, this is not the kind of place. I passed the examination yeah. and the one who will be replaced by me was not known anything about international organizations. Okay. Yeah. And there are also some reasons, uh, family problems. Yes. My father passed away at that time. He was a heart pressure. So I didn't know about the fact because they don't inform it of their families because they, it's, if if we if we knew about if we knew about the family in Pyongyang, we cannot work for the country. Okay. We cannot hard work hard. Right. Uh, but I, yeah, yeah. But I knew this news later through my mm -hmm. friends who mm -hmm. visit another country. Mm -hmm. Informed to me, so I insisted that I had to go to how do you say? Because I was the only one son mm -hmm. in my family, mm -hmm. so I had to. Go back and pay the respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So for my right. father respect. Well, uh, let me ask something. something though. So, so you escaped in 1998. There have been some high level defections recently. Your friend Che Young Ho and yeah. others who've escaped recently. Yeah. Is there a difference in their escapes now? Yes, the same. Uh, uh, I think they are same. Okay. The main reason are same of my defection mm -hmm. uh, and also the defection of Che Young Ho. Uh, and when I was escaping, uh, defecting, when I was defecting that not only me, but also several, many diplomats defected at the same time mm -hmm. in 1998. Okay. The ambassador of Egypt, mm -hmm. Zhang Sengil, and the uh, uh, consular of France, Zhang Sung Ho, mm -hmm. and many other diplomats, they defected simultaneously to the United States, mm -hmm. to South Korea, to Nordic countries. Uh, more than 10 diplomats defected. All of them they sought. So he's talking 20 years ago? Yeah, in 1998. Okay, yeah. okay. Now, uh, Taeyong Mo defected four years ago, and also Zhao Zhong the deputy mm -hmm. acting uh, ambassador in right. Italy, which I go to yes, right. <laughs> And also recently, the Kuwait, the, mm -hmm. the, the yes. one of the diplomats from Kuwait, he yes. or Mo, they are all my. Uh, Lower graduates of the Pyongyang Foreign Language College. Mm -hmm. uh, they defected. I think the main reason of defection at that time and even now, they are not confident about the 
Kim Jong Regime speech. Okay, this, this is very, is, yeah. this is very unclear. Unclear. Okay, uh, this, this is a question because just last week I had a reporter call me and ask me mm -hmm. about why are the elite defecting, and mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. like if you're standing in line and mm -hmm. you see the people at the front of the line getting shot, uh -huh. I mean, are you going to keep standing in line? Mm -hmm. I mean, so. They see what's happening to other people in the country. They see what happened to um, the others who've been executed. Why would they feel stable? Mm -hmm. Because they have privileges. But of it course, seems yeah. that those privileges are not stable. Yeah, right. They can be taken at any time. Right. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, now in Pyongyang, in North Korea, uh, they carried out, they opened, last month they opened the Ace Party Congress of the Workers' Party of Korea. And in this Congress, Kim Jong-un reported that uh, he made many mistakes for other people. Mm. He couldn't uh, help uh, many people, so that people are still living very poorly. Mm -hmm. And he said all the responsibilities are connected with the high elites of North Korea. Mm. And they executed many okay. uh, high level cadres, high ranking people. Of course, the diplomats cannot be executed like those people inside North Korea, but they are very much afraid of the uh, future of North Korea. And even though Kim Jong-un Jong uh, is, is executing a lot of high elites, high-ranking high people, I think he, will, he cannot change the situation of North Korea because they used, spent all the resources already. Hmm. Even though those you know high elites, the high ranking people, cadres are working more is more and more than before. There is no resources. Hmm. That is material resources right. in the in the store. Hmm. And secondly, the people of North Korea, they are not the people like they lived when Kim Il Sung was alive. Hmm. In this party ACES Party Congress, Kim Jong un said he they will return to the Kim Jong Kim Il Sung spirit again, saying that the general secretary general system of the Party Central Committee. Okay. Uh, but you know those North Korean people they were deceived, they were lied already in 1980s, 70s, 80s. They experienced, yeah. and they are now they were deceived by Kim Il Sung and Kim Jong Il. But now they are returning again. Uh, yeah, yeah, 30 or 40 years history again. So people never believe in in Kim Jong Un's uh, leadership of reason. Okay. So this is the main reason that those people would defect even nowadays to South Korea. Okay. Now another question that comes up very often is why isn't there a revolution in uh -huh. North Korea? Uh, have there been assassination attempts against? The dictators. Uh, many people are asking. They are asking me the same question. Yeah. So I think there's my my answer is right or wrong. I don't know exactly, but you know, uh, first reason is that it's a typically different situation from other countries like Libya, Iraq, mm -hmm. uh, or even the former Eastern European socialist countries. Mm -hmm. Because inside North Korea, this is the reason which carried out three generations from Kim Il Sung, Kim Jong Il, and Kim Jong Un. Mm -hmm. So, in other wo words, it is so strong. It has so strong, uh, you know, organizations like party and also the security, military and security agencies, okay. mm -hmm. who controls more than seventy years. Kim Il Sung, Kim Jong Il, and Kim Jong Un. Mm. So nobody can dare uprise mm. or mil carry out military coup. And no, uh, inside when we consider about North Korean population, around two twenty-five million, uh, we can divide three categories. The topest uh, category is the highest class. Mm -hmm are taking part about 20%. Mm -hmm. And then the middle class are 30%. Mm -hmm. And then the, the lowest class mm -hmm. might be 50%, mm -hmm. which are calling people. Mm -hmm. Here, the 20% of the topest class are all the uh, members who are carrying out the three 
generation successions like Kim, Kim Il Sung, Kim Jong Un, and Kim Jong Un. For example, Choi Yong Hee and Lee Yong Ho, Kim Yong Chung. All these high elites of twenty percent, they are also carrying out three generations of uh, succession in their families. So you see, these groups. They are not really uh, loyal and respect to Kim Jong Un because Kim Jong Un is great man. They know he is not great man, but they are loyal because they have to uh, survive. Okay, yeah. survival. When survival. Right, yeah. When Kim Jong Un is survival, they can survive. Otherwise, <laughs> if Kim Jong Un reason is uh, collapsed, they know very well they will be uh, hanged by those eighty percent. Middle class and lost people. Okay. In uh, nineteen in nineteen mm -hmm. uh, ninety two, mm -hmm. when the Soviet Union was collapsed, mm -hmm. uh, Kim Jong Il uh, sent the instructions to these five uh, powerful organizations: party, military, security, and foreign ministry, saying that, look, in Soviet Union, former Soviet Union, and East European countries. Uh, all the high elite people, they were hanged <laughs> by those angry people yeah. because of the corruption of the system yeah. uh, and prison. So if our system, social system, I mean North Korea, he said, mm -hmm. is collapsed like the Eastern European countries, mm -hmm. you will be the 20%, yeah. you will be the, you will go to the, uh, how do you say, caught and hanged by yeah. those people first. Right. So from now, it is the martial law of uh, yeah, war, mm -hmm. oppressing the people mm -hmm. uh, with machine, with the uh, you know arms. You have to control those people arm because the car party, yeah. the workers' party of North Korea could not control the uh, the, the angry people. So at that time. so basically, there's no revolution because those who are part of the elite yeah. you know they would die. But sure. a slightly related question yeah. is, um, why hasn't the system collapsed of its own way, of mm. its own failure? Yeah. I mean, for such a long time, people haven't really been able to eat that well there. Mm -hmm. um, people are dying. Why hasn't the system just kind of collapsed? I think that's what some people were, were expecting in the 1990s. Yeah. Because yeah. at that time, also 1990s, the, the, the region was almost collapsed. Mm -hmm. But because of too brutal, you see, this military uh, operation so brutal was was so brutal. But mm -hmm. even now, I think the collapse collapse of the North Korean prison is going on. We don't know when it is collapsed. Mm -hmm. It might be there might be sudden collapse situation, but it might go more than ten years, mm -hmm. twenty years. So I have, we have to, I think, prepare for bo both cases: mm. sudden collapse and long, long-term this region uh, existed. Okay. Well, then, because um, when we had the event a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. you suggested that the South Korean government should have this two-track approach: mm -hmm. sunshine, yeah, but also mm -hmm. preparing military to be strong. Sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Uh, Sunshine is also a Sunshine policy which North, South Korean government is carrying out. I think it might some uh, have successes, but it's not all. Because, you know, North Korea, they are using this Sunshine policy again. They reuse this Sunshine policy towards South Korea. Yeah. They are putting the more mosquito nets more strong, <laughs> stronger yeah. say, mosquito nets the countries, but they are receiving mm. uh, the materials, human assistance, yeah. humanitarian assistance is from North, South Korea. At the same time, they are uh, uniting more people, controlling more severely North Korean people, ideologically mm. and physically. So, you know, uh, I think we have to divide when we carry out the sunshine policy, we have to divide North Korean region and the people separate. We have to treat them separately. So we, this is more important. We just giving the you see money through the Gongang Town and Kaesong complex. If you give the money in cash and in, in US dollar, it, it all used 
for making the nuclear arms. Yeah. They say they are demonstrating that they have already completed the nuclear bombs. Mm -hmm. But now the South Korean people and even Japanese people, they are living under the nuclear bombs. Yeah. So we must be careful. Every time you say something, I've got like more questions, but I, I will start to wrap it up now. Uh -huh. uh, but one question is about the humanitarian aid and yeah. other things uh, 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 that goes into North Korea. Mm -hmm. People constantly ask how much of it really gets to the people. I mean, uh, what do you mean? How? So the, the aid that comes uh -huh. from other countries, uh -huh. does it just mainly go to the elite? Uh -huh. Or does it go to everyday people? Oh, yeah, who yeah. gets it? Yeah, you know, let's. I was the man. Yes, I know. We're on the program. Out. Exactly. That's why I'm asking no, you. Who cared? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Who cared? I carried out the humanitarian assistance for four years mm -hmm. in Rome when I was working in North Korean embassy in Rome. Mm -hmm. At that time, uh, <clears throat> the members of the WFP, donor countries, always there shouting about the uh, monitoring mm -hmm. and also uh, the visiting places. You see. But the North Korean government, uh, the state itself, they are organizing the visiting places, yes, which right. can be shown to the, <laughs> to the international society, right. but almost hidden. And they cannot uh, monitoring after they leave mm -hmm. the Pyongyang, right. they cannot monitor distribution. Yeah. So uh, to your question, if I answer to your question, about 20% mm. can go to the normal people. Okay. The poor people, mm -hmm. about 30% uh, can go to the military factories mm. for making the nuclear you see, yeah. programs, and about 50% are going to the Pyongyang and high energy people. Mm. 50%. Yeah. I'll give you the one example. Okay. Uh, at that time in the 1980s, you know, the donor countries' monitors, they visited Pyongyang, about 50 people. Mm -hmm. They go here and there, but they can't here, go here and there according to their will, their wish. Mm -hmm. They have to follow the, only the, uh, yeah. the visiting places made by North Korean authority. Yeah. They went to the Mohammedan Hotel, mm -hmm. the countryside, to monitoring the poor people's villages, mm -hmm. but they have to stay there in the hotels, international hotels. But in the morning when they come to the restaurant, they, after they work, work out, they go to the restaurant. In the restaurant, there was the bread and butters, which was supplied by the WFP <laughs> for the children, for the yeah. poor children, the, uh, nutritional food yeah. for the children, was supplied to the hotel. Uh, so, you know, uh, when we uh, assist, when we give the humanitarian assistance, mm -hmm. we must uh, keep uh, the international law and rules and principles strictly, especially to North Korean people, because uh, region. Uh, when I uh, visited uh, United States two years ago, I met several people of the intelligence organizations. Mm -hmm. They are, and even the State Department people, they told me that why they could not give the assistance, humanitarian assistance now to North Korea. Because North Korea, they are shouting that they have already fulfilled the nuclear programs. Mm. And in these circumstances, if the international community gives the humanitarian assistance, mm. it all goes to the uh, you know, various fields of the national economy. Mm. Then it means it's guaranteed and, and giving the full support for maintaining the nuclear programs forever. Okay. So they can could not they cannot give the humanitarian assistance at random mm -hmm. unless North Korea keeps up nuclear programs. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Alright and then just yeah. to wrap up yeah. uh, I'm two final questions. Okay you. please. So number one if you could talk to Kim Jong Un, uh -huh. what would you say? Uh -huh. A lot of people ask me this question, and uh -huh. I say nothing. <laughs> but then, and then the final thing is this: this this uh, YouTube channel is called Workable Words, uh -huh. and the idea is that your words should inspire people into some action. Mm. So, if there was a final, the common question that's asked all the time is, mm. "What should be done about North Korea?" Mm. So, what can people out there in the world? What can they do mm. to have some kind of an impact? Mm. So, 
You know, not only me, but also many people, mm -hmm. if they receive your question, mm -hmm. what should we do to Kim Jong-un? Yeah. I think there is no way. Okay. He must uh, take out, mm -hmm. we must take out him from Take, take him out? Or take him out assassinate from, him? Kidnap him? Kidnap him or assassinate him. Okay. Okay. Many people, they say, North Korean defectors and all, even other old people, they say, take him out of the region. Okay. And, you know, uh, this is the answer, final answer. Mm. We must re remove Kim Jong Un's mm. region. Uh, this is this is definite answer. But if there is alternate answer, that he has to at least open the country mm. and carry out the reform, at least like China, at the level of China, he must give freedom to the North Korean people. This is our demand. And the international community, like you, and the many international organizations and people are fighting for North Korean human rights and freedom. But it is so clear that he cannot open the country right. and give the freedom and the human rights to North Korean people. He, Kim Jong un knows very well. He, this is the age of the you see. Uh, stop. How, how do you say it? It's, it's the tactics of the age, okay. of the rocks, you see. Okay. So okay. He, in this moment, he can't uh, you see, uh, carry out any kind of reforms and open the country. He's more mm -hmm. oppressing and exploiting people, mm -hmm. uh, even by killing the high level. High elites yeah. every day. So then, what can the everyday people? Mm -hmm. What can they do? Even South no, North Korean no, people. Every day, people in the U.S., U.K., no. people who look at North Korea and say, "Ah, you know, mm -hmm. something needs to be done." Mm -hmm. What can be done? So, yeah, I think I, I am telling to South Korean people, uh, some organizations, that we have to uh, open the door. We have to uh, exchange it all kinds of visits mm -hmm. because South Korea is really developed. Um, not only economically, but also in the sort of political, uh, in, in social life, everything. This country, South Korea, carried out successfully economic uh, development, at the same time, democratization in South Korea. So we can show all the facts of South Korea to North Korean people. Mm -hmm. For that, we open the door. Okay. We can exchange more changes yeah. sometime, but, uh, So that North Korean people can know about the North South Korean uh, people. And also the humanitarian assistance, in the matter of uh, humanitarian assistance, we have to, as I told you, we have to divide North Korean region, or the dictatorial region, and also North Korean people. So if the South Korean NGO, even the government, they take the humanitarian assistance materials with their own hands, and they visit the real place, countryside, and they distribute it to the poor people themselves, okay. in order to reduce their anti-South Korean feelings and hatred. Mm -hmm. This is the only way. We don't. It is not allowed to give the money or the materials to Kim Jong Un prison. Mm -hmm. Then it will be used, like in the past, mm -hmm. uh, for is making the nuclear programs more developed. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is dangerous. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you. All right, I'm Casey Lartig. This is Remarkable <laughs> Words, and we've been joined by mm -hmm. Kim Dong Su, former North Korean diplomat and mm -hmm. insider, and man with lots of knowledge and experience about North Korea. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to come back sometimes, sure. uh, especially when there's a, something hot in the news, and let's talk about sure. it. Sure. All right. So thank, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. But since it's the first time, mm -hmm. uh, from next time we discuss. Or, or I'll inform you if you invite me here. Mm -hmm. I will inform you more detailed mm -hmm. uh, facts in, in South Korea, in North Korea, mm -hmm. including the polity and military and diplomacy and social life, mm -hmm. all fields. Okay, well, yeah. we can't say it all in one podcast. So yeah. we said as much as we could today. Okay. So thank you so much, yeah. and uh, thanks so much for watching. Please mm -hmm. like. Subscribe, share, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Teach North Korean refugees. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
lights are gonna go off, the camera's gonna go off suddenly. Yeah, recording is going to go off. love because it comes back tenfold. This what it does. T and K are sobering high like a dove. Teach North Korean refugees. Show them how we do. We'll assist your needs. Yeah, that's what we do. Because we got a plan for you. We want to help you all see the view.